<laughs> Studio City Neighborhood Council Board Meeting of month of March. Meeting is called to order at 7.03. Michael, if you could please call the roll. Richard Adams. Richard, I'm here. What was it a second ago? Thought I just heard him. You did. <laughs> Do I count that? Sorry, I thought I had muted. Okay. I'm gonna, you know, I got cats in the background, so I'm trying to keep it quiet. No problem. Uh, Brian Carroll. Brian Carroll will be absent this evening. Michael Blazer here. Randy Freed. Here. JJ Hoffman. Here. Alexa, uh, Alex is Vicky. No Alex. Uh, hang on, we have to let um, Alexa in. Oh, she's here, great. She just showed up. Um, I'll finish off this. Raduka Kaplan. No Raduka. Nancy Kramer. Here. Lisa Karajian. Here. Richard Niederberg. Here. Jesse Porter. Jesse Porter. Here. There he is. Uh, Rick Rosner. Here. Lana Shackelford. Here. Alexa Steinberg. Here. She's here. Hey. <laughs> and Adam Summer. Yeah, I'm here. Having trouble with my sound, so. Thank you. We have quorum. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, Point of order. Raduka's picture's up. I saw her a second ago. Virtually, that is. Okay, item number two, uh, approval of the February meeting minutes. Assuming everyone had an opportunity to look. Any corrections? No. Thank you, Richard. Hearing none, uh, minutes for February are approved. President's report. Okay, a few items. First and foremost, I just wanna say Again, thank you to Lisa Sarkin, the ad hoc uh, chair uh, for our election and getting the word out. Boy, have we had a response. We have uh, 18, so the certified candidate list has come out. We have 18 residential homeowner seats or candidates for that seats, 14 candidates for the renter seats, four for the business owners, one for the employee independent contractor, two representing service orgs running, and six individuals running for the at-large uh, st stakeholder seat. So best of luck to everyone. Please um, stay tuned for messages, more messages from Lisa Sarkin. And uh, the next part of that, of course, is in making sure that you register to vote by mail. Uh, all neighborhood councils are holding their elections by, by mail. You can see the information on our website or you can go to the clerk's website. Our website is scnc2021election.wordpress.com. Uh, if you go to studiocitync.org, up on the right-hand side of the homepage, you will see a link to our election website. So you must register to vote by mail by May 4th. So we, you do have a bit of time, but no time like the present. Uh, all ballots must be postmarked no later than May 11th, and they must be received by May 21st in order for the clerk to count your votes. All stakeholders will be able to vote for every seat. That was a recent change in our bylaws. Uh, I know that it might be a little confusing when you register to vote, but rest assured you will have a vote uh, for every category. Additionally, a big topic that uh, has been talked about throughout the community on Nextdoor, uh, other social media. Uh, I've received emails and others in the community regarding the park and ride lot uh, on Ventura Boulevard of the east end of Ventura. Uh, I want to thank Ms. Garagian for placing the issue of the parking lot on her agenda and having a great conversation and having Jessica Oriana from a uh, field deputy from Sheila Kuehl's office along with 
Lorraine Diaz from Councilman Kerkorian's office to talk a little bit about uh, what's going on and what's being done and frankly, what hasn't been done. Uh, I believe our homeless committee will be picking up that issue as well. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I was contacted by uh, Beth and Ellen Diamond representing the SCRA, the Studio City Residents Association and the Studio City Beautification Association. They uh, took the lead, if you will, in organizing a number of uh, residents associations along with us uh, to write a strongly worded letter to Sheila Kuehl's office. Uh, I don't know uh, what it will accomplish, but hopefully if nothing else, it will let Sheila Kuehl's office know loud and clearly that uh, stakeholders are highly concerned to say the least about what is going on in the park and ride. Specifically as it stands now, LASA is intending to have 25% of the parking lot become a uh, safe park, part of the Safe Park LA program, which is a program where you have to apply. Uh, the rest of the lot, it's not clear as to what uh, will be done. Uh, and all these organizations were demanding weekly cleanups, were uh, demanding a crackdown on the criminal element that is thriving there. And I know that, um, that we will at least along with our the other organizations in the community will try to stay on top or will stay on top of trying to hold our elected officials accountable and demanding uh, them to do what is morally and ethically right uh, to address the lives that are living in the lot and around the lot and how um, how safe it is for everyone with that uh, we will move on to, oh, lastly, uh, we had a stakeholder make a comment at the last meeting regarding uh, a number of dead links on our website. Those uh, links, as I understand it, from our web host have been addressed. So thank you to the stakeholder for bringing those to our attention. And with that, we will open to public comment on non-agenda items. Super, uh, super quick, uh, can you repeat? Uh the numbers for the council or for the election. I'm sorry, I didn't hear how many, like how many renters, how many, uh, just really quick. Sure, there's 18 uh, candidates for homeowners, 14 for renters, four for business owners, one for employees, independent contractors, two for service orgs, and six for at large. Obviously all of this info you can find as well on our website uh, and I encourage you to do so. Um, I'll just pull up my trusty timer and we will begin public comment on non-agenda items. So please, uh, sorry, I've scrolled it two minutes. Please raise your hand now. If you were happen to be on a dial and you would press pound up star six to raise your hand. No, star nine, sorry, star six is to mute. Star nine to raise your hand, lower your hand. We have a number of public comment. Call in user one, go ahead. My name is Richard Hopp. I'm the one that has disclosed about the hyperlinks. Subsequent to your February 17th response that you're working hard on it, I tested them 15 minutes ago. None of them have been corrected, you dipshit. Ooh. I've addressed this with you many times. You don't respond to emails, and now you're saying, oh, it's all fixed. Why don't you test them? I know you didn't test them. I have them all right in front of me, all 404 errors. You didn't say when it was corrected. You do this to me all the time. Then you strike saying that I'm a, I'm a, 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 a racist that done after I filed a complaint against you. You're just saying it to save yourself. You're just a real asshole. You have not, you, you, I sent you two emails asking what the uh, status is, and you never responded to any of them. Ms. Eric Pett and Dunn had to reach out to you. You're just an asshole, motherfucker. Don't ever forget that, what you've done to the website, you prick. Unconscionable. I think he's yielding the rest of his time. I believe so. We have public comment from, oh, Alex is Vicky. Let me promote your panelists. Uh, 
We have public comment from phone number ending in 018. Hi, Randy, it's Barry. Um, two hi, things. Barry. Um, hi, I, I would just like for these meetings to have all board members on the screen, even if it's a black, if it's black with your name, I think those of us attending the meeting have a right to know which board members are present. And I only see nine right now, and I know there's more present. So if you don't wanna show yourself, if you're in your pajamas, that's fine, but at least have a black square um, with your name. You know, I, I'm in my pajamas because I'm going to bed right after this meeting. So, but I'm not a board member. I don't think it's unreasonable. The other second thing I wanted to mention is, um, as you know, there is a, both a city and county redistricting commission or commissions going on right now. I've been attending both. There's been a lot of people attending the county one. And as you know, we have 10 million people in LA County and five supervisors. So that's 2 million per supervisor. Well, it just so happens that the Valley has 2 million people. So there's an awful lot of us that are trying to get our own supervisor, um, not Sheila Kuehl, but our own supervisor for those 2 million people that are in one geographic location in this county. And I think we will be much better served on part, things like this parking lot issue if we have a supervisor that is for the valley. It just doesn't make sense that we have a supervisor that goes over the hill to Santa Monica and the west side. Makes no sense at all. So keep your fingers crossed. Thank you. Thank you. Scott Mandel, go ahead. Hi, good evening, everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, my comment is uh, about the election. I'm at the city clerk uh, website right now. And for Studio City, they still show eight pendings. I'm just wondering if anyone uh, uh, has a clue as to when they'll get their act together and have a listing for Studio City of all the certified candidates and not the pendings. Also on that part- They do, by the way. It's on a different website. Richard, can you not interrupt his public comment? Thanks. Sorry. And also on the park and ride, some of you probably already know, um, after the land use meeting, I went through the lot and uh, recorded a video. So anyone who wants to see what is actually going on there, but doesn't want to venture to the lot or get out of their car and actually look at it up close. Um, there is a video that you can watch from the safety of your uh, of your laptop or desktop and uh, see what's going on in the park and ride lot. Anyone who doesn't have a copy, um, contact me somehow and I'll send you the link. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Maria Nichols, go ahead. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Maria Nichols, Community of Schools Administrator for the North Hollywood Valley Village Community of Schools in LAUSD. I'm here representing today, or you represent actually, uh, several of our schools, Carpenter Charter Community, Rio Vista Elementary School, Reed Middle School, and Carlson Home School. I'm just here to share a couple of things that um, LAUSD has done to really support our families during the pandemic and to bring good news that we are also in the process of reopening our schools. Um, if you would like more information regarding that, then uh, we can certainly be invited and we could give you a whole uh, presentation on the steps that LAUSD has taken to ensure that students are coming back and that our schools are safe for our students. Uh, but thus far, LAUSD uh, has served over 114 million meals. Uh, we have uh, provided mental health services to our communities uh, with, through our hotline. And uh, one of the most important endeavors that we've taken is providing free COVID tests at schools to our students, to our parents, 
to our staff and to also any family member that lives within any student's household. And that has been a very successful program. Currently, we are working diligently um, to ensure that our schools are safe, the safest uh, as possible. Uh, we have upgraded air filter systems. We have uh, hired extra custodial staff. We have um, a, a ultimate supply of uh, PPE and all folks that are returning, whether it be um, students or uh, teachers or support staff that work with students will be uh, committing to testing weekly uh, through our testing program. We are currently outreaching to parents as parents right now have received uh, selection forms and are going to make choices to return students to a hybrid model, three hour models um, at the school site. And part of that will be a three hour remote or whether students will continue in the remote model. Um, our opening will be for elementary schools and early ed centers mid-April and for secondary schools um, at end of April. So I wanted to share the good news. Um, our families have been hit with COVID-19. Our students have lost a year of school in this educational setting. Uh, but as I visit classrooms through Zoom and I'm in classrooms about uh, three to four a week, I've seen that uh, students and teachers have built community within the classrooms and our students are actively involved in utilization of technology tools. Um, amazing things actually have happened through these uh, difficult times that uh, we have gone through. So I wanted to share some positive news with you. And again, if you would like some additional information, I would be happy to do a presentation as I don't know if you might have a, a child in LAUSD and you might be very, very um, uh, concerned or excited or wondering about what your selection is going to be. So thank you so very much. Great, thank you very much, Maria. If you could please just email studio uh, board at studiocitync.org. So we all have your info and we can put it out there to our contacts for anyone who wants to contact you with questions about LAUSD. And I'm sure the board and everyone else uh, is with me and agreeing uh, and looking forward to seeing students back uh, in the classroom and back to uh, learning. So thank you so much. Mr. President. Yes, sir. Uh, Small point in order to the nice lady. Um, in the future, she should let you know that she has something to say and go under item six comments for government officials so she doesn't correct. have to cram it all into, into two minutes. You are uh, uh, correct, and uh, she's heard you say that, so thanks so much. Moving right along, we have a right. comment from phone number ending in 713. Go ahead. Ruth? Hello? Um, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead whenever you're, yep, we can, whenever you're ready. Okay, sorry, there's an airplane going. Um, okay, hi, this is Ruth, your um, roofless neighbor. Um, I heard in the planning and land use meeting about the eviction of the park and ride, and I was kind of horrified at, I, I mean, I was listening to the meeting and I, I clarified with the woman, um, I think Jessica from Sheila Cool's office, that it was a public place that you guys were talking about that was not being used for anything. I mean, like, would you guys take a bulldozer to a refugee camp? These people don't have anything. You guys have houses. You aren't using your park and ride lot. The Hollywood Bowl is closed. Like, people need somewhere to be, and the public is supposed to be everybody. If you put a dumpster there, I'm sure that they'll use it. And if you empty the dumpster, like, I mean, problem solved. When you talk about cleanup, like people, you, you talk about displacement, that's what they're, that's what they are. And it's ridiculous that you guys are talking about this being on next door where homeless people are not allowed to participate. Next door does not allow homeless people to participate at all. So when the incident on picturesque drive happened and everybody decided that it was a homeless person who did it, I was sleeping outside where there was supposedly somebody running around severing tongues. Don't you think I would have wanted to know that? Like I sleep outside. Like um, the, I was at the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners meeting and it was several hours long. By the end of it, there was still not a complete and consistent answer about how homeless people are supposed to vote in the neighborhood council elections. 
And you guys know that I'm involved in the neighborhood and I participate and I would like to vote. And I think that I should be able to. And as of right now, like, I'm not sure that I even can. So I just wanted to say, please, you know, um, the participation with Nextdoor could get you guys sued if you don't either, if they don't either make an exception so that homeless people can participate. Your time has expired. Or if you guys can. In terms of and respond to that, in terms of registering to vote, you can register to vote. Uh, the, there are, if you can do it online, you can register. If you can't do it online, you can print a, or you can go to a service provider, whether it's uh, Hope of the Valley, No Home Alliance, uh, any of these other organizations will help you register to vote. The ballot would then be mailed there, unless there was somewhere else that you were potentially receiving mail and you can vote that way. You are absolutely allowed to vote. Um, and my comments as it relates to next door was just one uh, of several places. It was also on Facebook. Um, there were also comments on Twitter. Um, and, the, and I can't speak for what platforms allow who, um, but we certainly welcome your voice, welcome your participation. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're at the, plan, the land use committee meeting. And uh, we certainly want you and I hope you will vote. And certainly I'm sure I can speak for all the board. We're happy to assist you if we can in any way to read, make sure that you're able to register to vote and that you get to vote. Uh, uh, public comment by, oh, that looks like everyone. Mr. President. No more public comment. Yes, Richard Adams. If a nice okay. lady needs an address, yeah, sorry, I managed to unmute myself again. If a nice lady doesn't have any other address to send her mail to, I do put her in touch with me privately and she can use mine and we'll figure out how to get to her. Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Richard. And uh, yeah. I, if, we'll, uh, yeah. we'll try to connect you. I'm next, sir. Okay. Yeah. I'm Army. I'm Army. We solve problems. We we don't pass them around. We solve them. Great. Thank you very much, Richard. Seeing no more hands for public comment on non-agenda items, we will move on to agenda item number five, Treasurer's Report. Rick Rosner, you're muted, sir. Okay. Hey. Um, I just checked and we have about $28,500 remaining to spend in the next three months until the end of the fiscal year. Um, talked to or wrote to Aola and the rollover will remain at $10,000. So if we have $10,000 left, we'll be able to roll it over into next year's budget. Um, so as we discussed at the uh, budget committee meeting, uh, we have plenty of money to spend if we can come up with worthy projects. That's about Great. it. Great, thank you very much. Sure. So with that, I hope if anyone in the community, uh, if we can find ways to uh, do some impact giving for our community, uh, I think we, we should. Um, okay, uh, moving right along. Actually, hold on. I see hands from the board. Hold on one second. Okay, go ahead. Um, go ahead, Richard. Niederberg. Yeah. Okay, first thing is that Yes, who's every area can vote 10901 Ventura Boulevard is an accurate address. The reason why I know this is a number of years ago we had we dealt with the people living in the park in Santa, Santa Barbara and the register wouldn't do it. We went to court and now everybody living under that palm tree, about a hundred of them, all are, are registered fully and there's already a court decision on this matter. Yes, they must register them, you know, 
Um, and that's basically the most important part. The other thing is is that on the website, on the, on the thing, there are certified lists of candidates. You know, um, there are the, the ones that are already uh, approved. The three pager for us, you know, very clear as for who the names are and what the certified date was. So that don't go after the old stuff that has the, the certified and the uh, pending, but there's a new one which is accurate. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, Richard. Lana. Hi, I just wanted to um, share a little bit more information on what our treasurer uh, reported to us about our funds, just to clarify that there are funds that have already been assigned uh, for certain things. For example, that $3,000 that we promised the Studio City Beautification Committee has not come out of that $28,000 yet. Uh, in addition, the monies that we approved for additional election uh, expenditures um, has not come out of that money yet. So we do have money, um, but it may not be as, as bountiful as it may sound at, at this juncture today, once some of those other pieces uh, come out of our treasury. So I just wanted to make that very clear and that we have been dutifully seeking out opportunities of where to place money. And I know that um, we do have a request in from one of our area schools. And uh, we've also had another request from uh, uh, our outreach chair uh, who has told us about an event that will be coming up uh, soon that um, we want to get some more um, definition on. So thank you. Michael DeLazer. Yeah, and as outreach chair, I can fill you in a little bit on what we were thinking. Um, we were going to, uh, we're going to get a motion into this meeting. It just didn't come together in time. We'll do it for the next one. But um, we want to support the uh, Juneteenth uh, event in the Colfax Meadows neighborhood. They've agreed if we can Get them some money uh, up to not but not over fifteen hundred dollars they would put our logo or include our logo in the printed materials for the juneteenth walk if anybody took this walk last year it was a brilliant event uh, to get people out get people in the neighborhoods walking socially distanced and learning about uh, the civil rights movement uh, and the struggle for equal rights or for civil rights. Uh, so uh, I think that that's a, a terrific way to get our name on an event, which we have not been able to do since COVID began and keep everybody safe and give people a chance to get some exercise, which I think all of us could probably <laughs> use about now. Um, and so that's that point. I had one other point that I wanted to say earlier, and that was about we're missing, we still have an empty seat on the board uh, from Yosef's uh, apps are uh, leaving us. So I don't know, I think we are past, we really need to move on that. I think even though elections are coming up, I don't think we, we can't, we, we can't move. Yeah, we can't fill the seat because we're too close to the election. Oh, okay, I, I'm, then I'm mistaken. Thank you. Lisa. Um, hi, good evening. Uh, I just wanted to respond to good Ruth, um, our homeless neighbor. Uh, she attends our meetings and um, I know she has mentioned that she lives on the streets. She doesn't exactly say uh, exactly where she is, which corner she is, but she does allude to it every once in a while. I just want to extend out um, and let her know that we are here to help her um, in any way we can to get her housed should she want to. Uh, 
Uh, no one should be living on the streets. Um, no one is evicting anybody at this moment in time. Uh, we are here to help and help you get into some kind of housing with Councilman Kerkorian's office or any other organization that we can make sure to um, get you housed. I just want her to know that. Um, I, I think about her often and I just wanna be able to make sure that she gets into a tiny home or any other type of uh, program that is available to any of our homeless neighbors. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. And Alex is Vicki. Can you hear me now? Hello? We can hear you now. It's like a Verizon commercial. We can hear you now. All right. Hey, I, that was very nice, Lisa. That was a very nice gesture. And I just want to echo that same sentiment. Uh, if you are homeless, please come to us and let us utilize the uh, resources we have at our disposal to get you housed. We would love to. That that would be, a, a hopefully, a shared objective. Um, my other point is, Moving to the budget, uh, I do believe we should definitely focus on uh, distributing some of that money to uh, the uh, some of the micro uh, concerns, uh, schools and whatnot. But but on a larger scale, I would uh, encourage uh, our board to maybe uh, start filling uh, some gaps of uh, lack of infrastructure within our own city uh, in regards to garbage and trash and filth that's being strewn about on some of the major corridors, especially the commercial corridors. Uh, along Ventura Boulevard, say, uh, between Laurel Canyon and Coldwater Canyon. Um, we are definitely lacking. We don't have street sweeping. We have garbage pails that are overfilled. Uh, people do want to throw their garbage away, but if the services aren't there, it's impossible. So I would just encourage that we kind of look towards maybe doing a fill gap of some of the lacking services we have due to coronavirus uh, in our community with some of those funds and make our stakeholders happy. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Moving on to agenda item number six, we have comments by government officials. So I see a couple here. So we'll start off with uh, uh, Vahid Korsand, uh, putting you on the spot, but I see that you're here. He is from uh, the mayor's office. He has anything to Vahid? Thank you for having me. Uh, Vahid Korsan, West Valley Area Rep. Uh, I believe most of you are on my email list, so this update will be rather short. I believe uh, you'll have Jess from the council office who can give a more in-depth update and hopefully you have some from the county office. I uh, just wanna bring your attention to what is happening tomorrow. The city planning department is having a webinar on supporting economic recovery through planning. As the former vice president of the citywide planning commission, I know public comment can be very important. And I'm, I'm glad myself to see that the planning department is making this outreach. And I think for those in Studio City, that this is a really good opportunity to engage with the planning department to bring attention to issues revolving around zone changes and reactivation of zones. So if you are interested, I can uh, resend the email with the information on it, or you can go to the city planning department's website and pull the information up there. Um, next to that, uh, just simple update, we're outrolling 50, or we've outrolled uh, nearly 55,000 vaccines this week at city sites. Uh, there is a lot of uh, sites that you can get vaccinate, vaccinated at, county, city, and state. Uh, if you have not been vaccinated and you do qualify, I encourage you to check every morning. There are a lot of openings uh, in, in the mornings and they get full. So you may get lucky and be able to get vaccinated same day. Other than that, I'm, I'm happy to take any questions that you have. Uh, thank you for having me. Great. Uh, well, uh, are there any questions from the public? Please raise your hand now.
Randy, I had my right? hand up earlier. Go right ahead, Richard Adams. Okay, this is nothing germane to what the gentleman just said, but uh, I wanted to chime in. I had an ins- reason to go up to 170 this afternoon going by Alexandria Park, and the tiny home village is looks damn near finished. I mean, there's tiny homes scattered all over. They've got trailers for what I assume is the management, and the city's moving along most ricky tick to get this thing up and running. Yeah, your opinion of whether or not this is good is a different thing entirely, but I figured I'd let the community know that uh, the city apparently is moving at, what's the phrase, all deliberate speed to make this happen. So that's all. Great. Uh, Are there any, I see a hand raised uh, as it relates to a question for our representative from the mayor's office. So I will recognize Puppet for two minutes. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. So again, um, it's so nice that the mayor cares about Studio City. Um, Studio City gets consideration, but what about the other goats in the other areas? Reseda, Van Eyes, Canoga Park. How come the mayor doesn't go over there and care about those billy goats over there? <laughs> Well, that's because Studio City has a lot more money. No. And? Oh, because of Paul Martin Krikorian. Exactly right. Yes. Nothing more corrupt than the licenseless Mr. Krikorian. Yes. So, um, as you might know, going over the Internet (laughs) and the breaking of ground for homeless criminal services, uh, Mr. Krikorian had this beautiful gold shovel and these beautiful gold scissors. And apparently somebody's buying these very expensive trinkets, and we just want to know who it is. Is it the developer? No. No. Is it the mayor's office? No. No. Well, then who it is? So Randy Fried Chicken, a.k.a. Randy Fraud, will tell us after my comments, yes. But uh, what's the mayor doing regarding helping small businesses get the PPP modified loans? Yes. What are you talking about? Oh, did you know, Randy, that uh, businesses that suffered a loss can use their 2019 or 2020 Schedule C and get $20,000 in tax-free money? Yeah. Oh, you don't know about that, huh? No. Yes. Uh, But the mayor also knows. What are you doing for the small businesses? All you're concerned about is... Your time has expired. Seeing other hands from the public with any board comments for... Actually, it's Barry. Um, Did you have a yeah, question for the, for the mayor's, mayor's representative? Yeah, on Friday yeah, afternoon. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, on Friday afternoon, I did some checking of my own just out of curiosity on my turn. Um, and some of the really big vaccination sites at four o'clock on Friday, if you checked for Saturday, you know, I was seeing 38 appointments available one place and 50 something somewhere else. It just seems like for those of us that don't qualify yet, within say four o'clock the day before, any of those appointments that aren't taken ought to be allowed to be taken by anyone. It's a crime that these appointments are not being filled. And I really think the mayor and the county should consider, say, four o'clock the day before, it's kind of like a a rush ticket to a a concert or something. At four o'clock the day before, whatever is still left ought to be available to anyone that can grab them. And again, it's a crime that these appointments are going unfilled. Thank you. I'd be happy to respond to that. Um, 
I, I don't think our office would disagree with you that uh, it's a shame that these appointments are going unfilled. We, we struggle daily and make a huge effort on a daily basis, the entire mayor's office, to do a lot of outreach to get the individuals who do qualify, especially from communities who have been disproportionately impacted by COVID, to make appointments and make it out to their appointed time. Uh, Unfortunately, a lot of the restrictions on who qualifies is not on the city or the county, but falls to the state. And so when the state eases those restrictions, you'll see us change tactics. We, we've had to, uh, at times, be a little bit more louder in our advocacy to get uh, a little bit more vaccine allotment to do outreach to the unhoused and to reach out to those disproportionate communities that have been impacted in South LA, East LA, and in the Northeast Valley. Thank you, Vahid. Are there any board questions for Vahid before we let him go? Lana Ford, go ahead. Hi, thank I've you. Got, I've got one. Oh. Can you just let Lana, she had her hand up first, Richard? Oh, my, my, not a problem, not a problem at all. <laughs> uh, no worries. Hi, thank you so much no for worries. being here. I had a quick question in regards to, I'm the renter representative for Studio City currently, uh, along with two others. Um, and I have a question in the area of the emergency order as it relates to renters and their particular issues that they will face once the emergency order is lifted. I understand that once it is lifted, um, anyone owing funds would have up to a year to pay it back. but. I, I would ask that there be some consideration and conversation to extend that. I believe that um, now that we've gone more than a year uh, since the emergency order has been put into place, I don't know that anyone really anticipated it going for a full year. Um, I, I, I feel like that that 12 months for many of the folks in, in financial situations would have a, a very difficult time in trying to pay that back on top of on top of their rent and we might see you know more evictions and things like that so i would just uh, offer that uh, for your consideration to take to the mayor thank you and uh richard adams go ahead yeah um <laughs> Background for the gentleman. I'm an Army trained pharmacy te technician, have been since the early 90s. Uh, my wife is a clinical pharmacist, currently director of pharmacy for a medical center in Central California. And I've dealt with vaccines, experimental medications, everything for decades. And based on what's going on and knowing the restrictions on the medications that they're currently coming out with, knowing the stability, limited stability they have after, you know, like six hours and some of them are a little more, some are a little less. The And the restrictions are not the fault of the mayor or the city or the county. What steps are being taken to make sure that vials are not being punctured and the vast majority of each dosage, the dosage is available in each one, are not being wasted simply because, well, we've got one more than... So we open a vial and throw away five, potentially six doses to uh, inoculate one person. This is not good pharmacoeconomics. It's not good husbandry of the medication. And I just want to know what, if anything, the mayor's office and the rest of the city is doing to conserve and allocate resources appropriately without being wasteful. And if he doesn't have the answers, which I wouldn't be surprised, how do I contact him? Uh, separately to get feedback on this because obviously professionally it's important to me. Uh, so to get a hold of me, it's just, uh, you can see my name on the screen. It's I can't just... see your name. Oh, I can't see your name, sir. I am uh, technology Richard, challenged on purpose. Richard, I'll <laughs> forward you uh, Vahid's uh, email and contact info. Thank you. Outstanding. Richard. We'll take um, it from there. Uh, to give you a quick response, I can tell you, I don't know about the how it's transported. I'm sure that's something we can get an answer for you on. Uh, in terms of the locations, they do, they have done a really good job at uh, figuring out how many people will show up and having enough vaccines there. And because there are so many vaccine sites, um, including mobile sites, you'll see that they get moved around as well. Uh, there is also an effort to uh, vaccinate the unhoused population. So a lot of it has moved around there to 
I have not heard any reports of uh, at city loca locations, at least of any extras left over and any spoilage. But if you do e email me, I'll, I'll follow up on it for you. Thank you, Vahid. Okay, um, seeing other hands from board members, Vahid, thank you so much. Uh, oh, Lisa, Lisa Kay, go right yes. ahead. Thank you. Um, hi, Vahid, uh, welcome to our meeting. Uh, you and I had uh, corresponded uh, via email when I reached out to you in regard to uh, the park and ride lot on Ventura Boulevard on the east end of Studio City asking if we could turn that lot into a vaccination site to which you responded, it might be a possibility to have a mobile site um, to drop in. So just wondering if that could become a reality to vaccinate the unhoused that are currently living there to get started in that way. Uh, might that be a possibility moving into the future? Thank you. Uh that is a possibility, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, we don't know where LAFD goes to vaccinate uh, the unhoused beforehand. For example, I only found out today where they're going on Friday and only because I asked when they would go to a specific location. Uh, they have their own set schedule on visiting encampments and safe parking sites, and they use the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, so they only have to go one time. Uh, I think in the follow-up to that, it goes back to, uh, again, the city council office. So each council office is working with the mayor's office to figure out a mobile vaccine schedule. I'm not quite sure where they're at yet for CD2, uh, but I know the council office and the mayor's office have been in communications about uh, how to roll that out. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. We have a hand raised by Colin User by Hate. So if you'll just do one more question, it'd be great. Colin User number one, go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I know your office has promoted, I think, under Directive 27, diversity. Uh, it appears, and it's been stated very clearly, uh, the Department of Neighbor Our Neighborhood Empowerment does not prohibit uh, convicted child molesters from running or being on the neighborhood council board. I'd like to know if there could be some clarification on that, why a registered sex offender, child molester, convicted, is allowed to be on a neighborhood council board. Thank you. I don't have a good answer for you on that, but if you do email me, I will look into it for you. I would imagine that uh, unless they're disqualified by some city ordinance or federal law or state law, that they would still be allowed to run for public office. Thank you, Vahid. Okay, again, thank you, Vahid, for uh, joining us this evening and uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you for having me. Uh, on another note, uh, Jessica from our, our field director or our field deputy from Cosmic Recording's office will not be joining us this evening. She had other business to take, personal business that takes her away from our meeting, but she does give her regards and says that if there are any concerns uh, to please uh, email her. I will say she did send me uh, an update on our on crime in Studio City uh, based on the numbers reported by our single patrol car in Studio City. And while it seems that our part one crimes, uh, she said more some of the, from the report, and I, I'm happy to send it to anyone who's interested, some of the more serious things like murder and uh, rape are, are down, that they're, they're, they're next to none anyway in Studio City. However, um, property theft and aggravated assault is on the rise uh, in Studio City um, so far this year compared to last year's numbers. Uh, so I am hopeful that next month we will have a public safety committee meeting and hopefully we'll have more work in the coming month and we will also hear more from uh, our senior lead officer, Sean Smith, as to what uh, the LAP is doing to uh, address these matters. Okay, uh, moving on to agenda item number seven, Transportation Committee, uh, Barry Mr. Johnson. Mr. President? Yes, Mr. Richard President. Adams. 
Yeah, before you start down the road with transportation, I'll clear decks as fast as I can. Unless North Hollywood is reorganized, Studio City has three patrol cars, one of which comes out of Van Nuys, which services most but not everybody west of Coldwater. Minor nit, but an important one. Sean Smith is our senior lead for the neighborhood council because most of Studio City is in North Hollywood. But my senior lead is uh, Jose Saldana because 9 out of 86 out of Van Nuys. That's all. Just want to be, make sure we everybody understands what's going on. Transportation, Barry Johnson. Okay, we have three motions for tonight. Um, I think two are leftovers from last month. Um, the first one has to do with Metro looking at congestion pricing on streets and freeways. Again, similar to what's being done in London. Um, however, London has 10 to 20 different subway lines. We have one. So um, anyway, we came up with this motion. The board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council opposes any congestion pricing scheme proposed by Metro. Congestion pricing for using streets and freeways hurt those who can't afford these fees the most. There has to be a better solution than congestion pricing. And that's the motion. Okay, so before we um, have board conversation and vote, if there is any public comment. So public comment on agenda item 7A. There's already a number of hands raised. Go puppet, go ahead for two minutes. Unmute me. I, I think I did. Yes. So, let's see here. We have a seven alpha. Let me see here. Oh, pricing schemes. Yes. Using the streets and freeways to hurt those who cannot afford the fees the most. So again, um, uh, this is the work of uh, Randy Fraud. It's the work of Alexis Steinberg. All of the wealthy people who drive, you say the same thing. That's right, Jesse, that's right. You say the same thing. Well, you gotta pay your fair share. You're not paying enough in taxes. We gotta get off fossil fuels because you, you disgusting people, how you have the nerve, the nerve to drive your own car and go where you want to go. How dare you, slaves? How dare you? That's right. Yes, we hear that all the time. What do you have left in life that's freedom? We don't have the right to speak. A friend of mine last night had this two tires slashed his windows broken at a, at a sister city for speaking against a commission appointment. <laughs> yes, we have a mayor, but the worst part of all is the biggest criminal, Jessica Fulgate, who is not here tonight to address why she's interfering with Paul Martin Krikorian's ability to do a better job. She left, she abandoned us. Come back. Help us, help Studio City, help us, because we need to clean up that fucking parking lot over there where we park cars, and we need to be able to. Your time is expired. We have public comment from calling user one. Go ahead. This motion is pretty much straightforward, but there's one thing. When I write legislative memorandums, I never put, there should be a better solution. I actually name the solution or solutions. Why did you just leave this as a cliffhanger where there should be a better solution? What's the solution? What do you suggest? My legislative memorandums, and uh, Randy Fraud over there knows what they are, says, the problem, address the legability, and then at the end, 
you provide a solution or amendment, something of that nature. What, what's the uh, uh, solution? What's better? What your definition of better or mine is might be two different things. So this is called scant, a scant motion. But I'm not blaming the person that wrote this up. I do appreciate you even uh, attempting this. Uh, Mr. Uh, Fraud over there should have assisted you a little bit more. Thank you. Scott Mandel, go ahead. Uh, hi, everybody. I just want to voice support for Barry and uh, Transportation Committee. I listened to them discussing this when th this was in committee. Um, my comment is at this point in time where we don't even know what the new normal is going to be, it seems, I mean, I'm against a study of anything regarding traffic until such time when businesses and traffic and patterns do return to what would be something of normal that can be studied. Uh, secondly, this sounds like an effort to try to force people to ride Metro. Just as an example, if me and three of my friends are gonna take the red line down to Staples, uh, it's 32 round trip all in. Uber's between 35 and 40, depending on what time. So to get me uh, from driving and on to MTA, they're going to have to ding me for over $100 before I would consider uh, a trip on the red line. Uh, I don't know if any of you have been on it recently. I've ridden it pre-pandemic and during the pandemic, and uh, it is not a pretty sight, and I don't think it's going to get anybody to get out of their car, and I think it's foolish, and it shouldn't happen. Thanks. Okay, seeing no more public comment, public comment is closed. We'll go to board comments. Michael Lazar. Michael, you're Michael, muted. You to mute, unmute yourself. I thought I clicked, I clicked the wrong one. Uh, I, just a friendly amendment to this, uh, to this motion, I would like to strike a language. There has been, there has to be a better solution than congestion pricing, and replace it with the board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council suggests exploring alternative solutions to congestion's pricing. Barry, well, I, I accept that um, uh, friendly amendment, and there there are some other neighborhood councils that have used both languages both what you say michael and what we had here originally and um they are already working on this despite the pandemic so this is timely now so just to be clear the friendly amendment again is the board of the fcnc explore all alternative options michael the friendly amendment was the board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council suggests exploring alternative solutions to congestion pricing. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, Alex, and, and somebody written that down. I'll email it. Okay, thank you. I amended the minutes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alex. Hello? Yep, there you are. Who, who did you, you call? You? I called you. Did you say Alex? Okay, good. I did. Uh, so we've got three issues. Great. Thank you, Mr. Freed. I appreciate it. Uh, there's three issues here. First of all, and they don't seem to be connected because that's pretty much how our city runs. Uh, the first issue is, is the, uh, the, met the state of the metro rail. Uh, it's, utter it's an other pigsty, absolute disaster, not rideable for mere mortals. Uh, it's uh, something that's been neglected. They build it, and the city of Los Angeles does what they always do, then they neglect it. Uh, that's the first issue. No one's going to want to ride such a, such a disgrace of, a, of mode of transportation. Secondly, uh, we are not like London, because London has been built out over the last 800 years, whereas we have been uh, 
pretty much uh, loosey goosey with all of our planning and free expansion of, uh, of, 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 of apartments and whatnot, causing this cluster F uh, to our society. Thus, now, because the planning department decided that they wanted to, uh, to, to collect money on the back end by approving all of these uh, build outs, now they want to penalize the people that are a victim to it, which is absolutely disgraceful. Uh, and so I would like to even amend uh, the uh, item to state uh, alternatives that do not penalize uh, 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 drivers or, or, or people that are choosing the mode of transportation of their choice. That's my suggestion. I'd like to take it a step further. Other alternatives, I just don't feel that the public should be penalized for just living here and uh, being welcomed here by a planning department that doesn't know it's ass from its elbow and then decides that they want to penalize us for uh, the congestion. That's all. Any other board comments? I had my hand up. Point of order. Balance. Did Alex just make Rick a motion? Adams. Yes, Nancy. Did Alex, did Alex just make a motion? Alex. Yes. Alex? Yes. Hello. Um, Is there a can second? Can you hear me now? I would yeah, like to so just, I would like to, I would like, if anyone seconds it, instead of stating that we would like an <laughs> alternative solution, I would like to take it further and state that we would like an alternative solution that does not penalize uh, the, the taxpayer or the stakeholder uh, financially. Or if someone well, has a it, better verbiage. It already says streets and freeways hurt those who can't afford these fees the most. I don't think we need to go any further than that. It, it makes us look too nimby. Oh, really? Just to state that all Los Angeles stakeholders are, shouldn't be uh, victimized by this? I don't think that's NIMBY. If Los Angeles is, is a NIMBY, uh, stating that people are hurt financially by this and trying to appease to the uh, sentiment of, of our tax collectors uh, typically doesn't work. But I appreciate your thoughts. Great. Is there any board member who is seconding uh, Alex's motion? Uh I, I missed that part on muting myself. I just have a comment. Well, can we just see if there's a second to Alex's motion first, please? Thanks. Any board member wishing to second Alex's motion? Hearing none, uh, motion will move forward. Go ahead, Richard Adams. Okay, I thought that was offered as a friendly amendment and the uh, amendment author de politely declined it. Uh, I will not take a stand one way or the other. I would point out that the streets and the freeways throughout some, throughout the country, let alone California, L.A. County, et cetera, have been paid for over the decades by property owners, whether residential, business, et cetera, and by everybody who has ever bought a gallon of fuel or even a fraction of a gallon of fuel at any gasoline station. Um not to mention the bond issues that pass in time and time again, promising once and all for all the nirvana of no congestion. None of them were worked out. Metro is now talking about, uh, Barry, there's, I stored you the motion. What is it? Uh, you, you won't even have to have a fareless um, Metro. You won't even have to pay to get on. How they're going to rig that, I don't know. Pretty sure it's going to come out of my pocket and everybody else who's on this list one way or the other. And this congestion pricing is a tax on a tax and a tax and an obscenity in my humble opinion. Thank you. Jesse. Quick, uh, quick point of clarification that I hope Barry can help me with. Barry, in some of the links you provided, um, <clears throat> uh, some of these links refer to motions, uh, city, city council motions for studies but the links are a couple of years old. Is there a current uh, motion, uh, pardon me, is there a current congestion pricing scheme currently being proposed by Metro or is this like a sort of a preemptive motion that you're putting forth there? It, it is going forward just only now as a study. So this motion does get in at the ground floor level 
but you can bet they're going to come up with the scheme, whatever it is, and how much of downtown or whatever it is the area is and how much it will be. And our neighborhood council will get the chance to chime in again for sure. But this is just letting it know, letting them know now that we don't want this at all. And keep in mind, this will go to the Metro board of which Paul Krikorian, Mayor Garcetti, and a couple other council members are on that board. So I think it's important that they see this now. And once they have a scheme of what they're going to do, I'm sure we will comment again, because this, they're not going to back down on this, you can be sure, because it's a way that they can get another revenue stream going. Great. Thank you. With that, let's move this to a vote. Alexa, call the roll. Um, pull up my roll sheet here. Can you read okay. This one more time? What? Can you read the motion to read it? As amended. Okay. Uh, as amended, we're voting on motion 7A. The Board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council opposes any congestion pricing scheme proposed by Metro. Congestion pricing for using streets and freeways hurt those who can't afford these fees the most. The board of the, stu of the Studio City Neighborhood Council suggests exploring alternative solutions to congestion pricing. We good? Yep, let's vote. Richard Adams. Yes. Ryan is absent. Michael? Yes. Randy? Yes. Alex? Yes. Mira? Oh, no. Raduka? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Nancy? Yes. I think I heard a yes. Yes. Richard? Richard? I'll come back. Jesse? No. Rick? Yes. Lana? Yes. Alexa, yes. Adam? Yes. And did we hear from Richard? And JJ. Niederberg? Do you hear the other Richard? Niederberg. Okay. You got my yes, yes? Yes. Well, motion passes. Good. Uh, JJ gets the vote on this, I think. Too. No. Uh, motion 7B. Our next motion uh, was is a um, community impact statement, and it was a council file brought by council member Mike Bonin, and it um, essentially modernizes the preferential parking district program. This neighborhood council has supported several PPDs in Studio City, and it's been very cumbersome for our neighborhoods to gather signatures and do many different things involved with applying for the program once the neighborhood council has approved their application and this would help put it into the computer age as far as doing signatures because you have to get in a PPD you have to get 75 percent of the neighborhood to sign on and this would allow much more computer generated um, signatures and things like that and it's just even even um, Felix Valdi, who has been our contact at LADOT for preferential parking districts, said they just need to modernize. They're not in the 21st century um, in this particular department right now. So um, as traffic increases again, you know, they, they've had a lot of things on hold this last year, but I'm sure they will get back working again and, and this will help them um, modernize. So I'll, I'll read the motion. The Board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council 
supports Council File 21-0105 by Council Member Mike Bonin to modernize the Preferential Parking District PPD program to be easier for residents to ac access and for staff to administer. For example, changing procedures to include a virtual petition option would streamline both petition circulation and signature verification, saving city staff time and resident effort. A public facing tracking system would reduce the need for correspondence to update residents on the status of their applications. This motion is to be submitted as a community impact statement, CIS, to CF 21-0105. Okay, we'll hit pause there. Before board response, we'll go to public comment. Public comment, call in user number one, go ahead. Nice motion, does what it means, but you're supporting something in the abyss. There is no cost benefit analysis or fiscal analysis for this. So we're gonna, you're going to have the DOT or whoever's going to run this spend a million dollars to solve a $1,000 problem. What's the cost benefit analysis? What's the fiscal? Who's going to, how many more people are, are going to hire and, and how is this going to be administered and so forth? That's very scant. I can't find anything on the council file on that. Basically, they're asking on the council file is three or four report back. So you're doing it before they report back. That's not very good. Don't you want to have all your information? That's what you do in law. You make sure you get all the information as possible. I know the fraud over here, he doesn't care. But uh, you should probably wait for the report. Table it until that report comes, but if you want to do what you want to do, God willing and be blessed. Thank you. Public comment from the puppet. Go ahead or go. A oh, puppet. <laughs> Man, what's my pronoun? Ow! on the topic. I'll talk to you about this today. All right, sir. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> it's been a long day. So again, um, we have um, this preferential uh, parking um, scam. <laughs> and that's very good, though. Uh, Go Puppet surprisingly will support it. What? Well, then, well hold on, sir. <laughs> now, uh, the reason is, is um, now that Jose Weezer is going to prison, uh, the FBI um, uh, talked to us the other day and said, uh, well, who's going to be the next Weezer? We're going to lose our jobs if we have to close the probe when we go on trial in June. Well, there's a couple of new candidates, and one of them is surely your council member. So, again, um, make sure that uh, you place the uh, the cash inside the liquor box um, at the end of the year. Queen of Order, state your main to the motion. <laughs> What's this? What's going on? <laughs> what the hell is she yelling at? Oh, that. Uh, which one was that? Well, that's the that's the Malibu Beach House woman. Oh, oh, oh! That's a high class of people. That's different. We listen to her. <laughs> and the rest of you assholes, we ignore. Now, as we know, um, whenever you get preference, that is the synonym for payoff in any government entity. So. Um, keep up the good work. Um, let's hope they take lots of cash and let's hope it's videotaped. Like when Mr. Weezer's deputy drove over to his house and somebody followed him and saw him take the box of money in there. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Give me a high five. Yes. Yeah, so again, um, we're working on Weezer 2.0. Your time has expired. Seeing no other hands for public comment. Public comment is now closed. Board comment, Richard Adams. All righty, head to unmute. I'm trying to be good. Um, 
in general, this sounds like a good idea, and they're going to study or modernize one way or the other. Current situation didn't work even before the Chicom crud hit, and everybody lost their minds. So the people in my neighborhood, uphill from me, my street's no parking at time, has been for 30 or more years. Richard, uh, respectfully, so, could you stop Could you stop referring to the coronavirus as Chicom crud? It's really inappropriate. Um, you said all the time. Yeah, no, it's, called the, it's, it's called the First Amendment. It, it's called the First Amendment. It came from China. It's called, and it, I it, use, excuse me. You, it's called you are a board member, and we're in a board meeting, and you are assigned to a... a to act in a certain way when you are a board member. I'm not saying you can't say that. You just can't say that while you're acting in the capacity of a neighborhood council board member. Thank you. Finish your comment. Your violation of my First Amendment rights is noted. Anyway, before the defugally became honest and everybody overreacted, my neighbors circulated petitions, got everybody, got it forward, and then some push pencil-pushing Yahoo downtown said, Oh, you used the wrong form. And they had to start all over again. So this is obviously needs to be fixed, needs to be improved, and somebody needs to read the Constitution. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, Michael DeLazer. Yeah, I would just, I, I have a question for Barry. I mean, besides the fact that, you know, our vast resources prohibit us from doing an, exa an exhaustive financial research impacts on, of this motion on the community. Um, Barry, what about existing, what happens with existing applications? Um, just for example, our block over two years ago applied for this thing and we've never heard a thing about it. Like it submitted all the proper paperwork and all of that. What happens in that event that with existing applications. You're still in the queue. You don't have to start over. And he, yes, he does have two or three for Studio City that are just pending work getting going again. I mean, they haven't even been sending out their people um, to do surveys for this because of the virus. And the other thing is this particular program it operates on a shoestring. It never has enough money to do what they're supposed to do. And yes, the fact that this is now a study for more money, but you can bet they're not going to get millions and millions that they're still going to be kept on a shoestring, even if they go to computer. Um, so, but it, yes, for existing ones, you're still in the queue and you're still going to be taken care of before any of uh, anybody new gets in under a computerization um, mechanism of the application. Thank you for the answer. Uh -huh. Lana, go ahead. Thanks. So Barry, the way I read this motion, it seems that this is to update, modernize an online platform that that is operated right is that what i'm yes understanding okay and it seems like um whatever investment would be used now would go for the future um efficiency of running this program and make it more uh widely available and easier to use for participants Sick. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And, and the Thank person you. we work with, Felix Baldi, has been trying for this for all the years we've been working with him. So, you know, he's just trying to make it more efficient. And I think he I think council member Mike Bonin and him talked. And I think how that's how this motion and council file came about. Thank you. Seeing no other hands raised by board members. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jesse. Thanks, Randy. Um, it's it's a it's a tricky um, tightrope for me because I'm simultaneously um, quite interested in in streamlining and modernizing uh, all manner of processes and portals, etc. Um, simultaneously, there's the underlying question of 
preferential par parking districts in general. And this, this question has been uh, raised more than once during my tenure on the board. I was, um, I was quite, I think, taken by a statement by Mr. Niederberg, probably about a year and a half ago at this point, when he sort of spoke to the uh, importance of, of general access um, for traffic and parking um, in, uh, in and on our public thoroughfares. And I remain sort of uh, cautiously skeptical about uh, the, the, the um, underlying merits of the, the whole concept of preferential parking. Um, so it, it strikes me that to vote for the, um, the increase in efficacy in the systems that deliver uh, that particular uh, um, um, state of being to certain neighborhoods uh, at the potential detriment to hourly or low-income workers who, who work nearby, uh, it's, it's a real issue. So I'll be voting against this, not because I don't believe in modernization, but because PPDs um, still haven't, uh, haven't, haven't quite demonstrated to me that, that, that they really benefit all people in an equitable manner. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Seeing no other hands from board members, let's move this to a vote. Alexa. Richard Adams. Yes. Michael. I support the motion, but because it affects me directly, mm -hmm. I'm going to abstain. Randy. Yes. Alex. Yes. And JJ can vote on this, right? JJ, how do you vote? Um, I'll abstain for now. Okay. Raduka. Abstain. Lisa. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Richard. Niederberg. Yeah. Yes. Jesse? No. Rick? Yes. Lana? Yes. Alexa, yes. And Adam? Yes. Motion passes. Motion C, seven, item, agenda item 7C. Barry? Our last motion for transportation has to do with um, sidewalks in our residential, multi-residential neighborhoods. And if any of you have seen some like on um, Radford, the, near the corner of Radford and um, the river, there's an apartment going in. There was a five foot wide sidewalk, which for all those streets, you know, Guren, Hoffman were are, that are all multifamily houses. They all have five foot wide sidewalks. And then when they build a new building, they decide, oh, we're gonna build a 15 foot wide sidewalk, obliterate the parkway, take out the trees and be total, some, total cement. Um, I had a picture in one of our um, agenda, our transportation agenda, but literally we lose the five foot sidewalk and the green parkway with trees and they tore out the trees there on Valley Heart. That's, that's the street. And this is just a motion asking council member Kikorian to make a motion to stop this practice and keep our five foot sidewalks in our residential neighborhoods, multifamily neighborhoods, and keep our trees and tree canopy. So the motion is as follows. The board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council requests council member Paul Krikorian to make a motion to keep sidewalk width and parkway width in new residential developments, the same as adjoining properties to keep our much needed tree canopy in parkways. Residential developments just do not need 10 to 15 foot wide sidewalks that are out of character with the rest of the neighborhood. Okay, we will pause now for public comment. 
public comment on agenda item number 7C. Call in user number one, go ahead. Hey, Randy Fraud, don't ever yell on a board member like that for saying China virus. Don't be a coward, you wuss. Uh, as to the motion, uh, just a little FYI, uh, draw up a motion, have an attorney look at it, you need to contact me, not a problem, or you can even use Wayne from Encino, he's a fun one, uh, to see the statutory language and you submit it to Kikorian then. Guess what? He has to do very little work except copy and paste. And you ask them to draft it, that takes their time away. It's called casing up a file. Randy Fraud knows what that is, or he should at least, based on his uh, uh, resume or whatever it's called. So always have it drafted up. Uh, I do appreciate that you're trying to do something, but uh, less work the uh, bureaucrat has to do, easier it's able to address. And also you could address in your motion before you give it to them. They might have some changes in all there, in which then you could address those. It just makes it real smooth. Thank you. Kira Durbin, go ahead. Hi, thanks everybody. Um, I'm an alternate on the Community Forest Advisory Committee. For any of you that don't know, that's an advisory board for the mayor's office. So I really wanna thank you, uh, Mr. Johnson, for putting this on the agenda. I'm sure that you all know that setbacks are a part of the city design code. Um, these setbacks absolutely are not necessary in any way. Um, we desperately need to keep our tree canopy. I don't think most people have any idea um, how much, much, well, Raduca, <laughs> Raduca knows how much, <laughs> how much benefit we get from these beautiful mature trees and we really need to keep them. So I appreciate you adding that into the motion. And um, I would just suggest that the Plum Committee keep an eye on this. Um, and if it's something that you're against, if it's something that you vote to support this motion tonight, make sure you're publicly voicing that every time a multi-use project comes up, that you're objecting to the setbacks and you're objecting to cutting down those trees. Thank you. Thank you, Kira. Seeing no other hands raised for public comment, public comment is now closed on agenda item number 7C. Uh, board comment, Richard Adams. Yeah, I think I had my hand raised something else. No, this is a good idea. It makes absolute perfect sense. The city will pay no attention to it. But uh, congratulations to Barry for bringing this up. And yeah, it needs to happen. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Michael DeLazer. Um, yeah, I don't agree with for two, two things, a friendly amendment second, but first I, I don't agree with utilizing Studio City Neighborhood Council funds to pay a lawyer to dress up some language in a, in a local motion. I think that that's um, not a good use of our funds. Uh, the language I would like to change is strike residential developments just do not need 10 to 15 foot wide sidewalks that are out of character with the rest of the neighborhood and replace it with while maintaining the existing aesthetics of the surrounding neighborhood. And the reason is because by offering that example, what if somebody comes in with a 20 foot wide sidewalk? What if somebody does something to just walk around this little idea of a motion, keep it more broad and uh, it gives us more teeth if there's a fight. They could they're actually don't want to do this. The city is forcing them to. So and because this is not a community impact statement, it's going to Paul's office. I have complete confidence that the motion as written, if they decide to make a motion to the city council, that they will get it from what is written here. So, um, yeah, they, there wouldn't be a 20 foot sidewalk anyway. The reason it's 15 is because the city's telling them to do that right now 
as um, one of our other commenters said. Thank you, Michael. Is there any other board comment on this? Jesse Porter. Uh, yeah, this is a terrific motion and I, it's well needed. What's happened down there on Valley Heart and in some of the other places is, is really brutal. Um, the friendly, friendly amendment that I would suggest, uh, it actually sort of uh, corresponds with some wording that Michael suggested, but instead of to strike to keep our and to replace that with uh, in order to maintain our, um, it just seems a bit more eloquent somehow to maintain rather than, than simply to keep, which was the uh, word that- that's the, Yeah, accepted. Is that okay, Alexa? Can you repeat exactly what he wanted to do? Did, we were just uh, replacing a word or did we accept Michael's amendment? No, I'm accepting Jesse. Okay, and Jesse and wanted he wants to- to replace the word keep with something else, go ahead. Jeff. Yeah, uh, rather maintain. than to keep, uh, rather than to keep, we would do in order to maintain. Oh. Got it. Okay, seeing no other board comment, we can take this to a vote, please. Okay, one second. I'm still amending here. Make sure I get the right stuff. Okay. Do you want me to read it as amended or are we good? Please. Seven, motion 7C, the board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council requests council member Paul Kerkorian to make a motion to keep sidewalk widths and parkway widths in new residential developments, the same as adjoining properties in order to maintain our much needed tree canopy in parkways. Residential developments just do not need 10 to 15 foot wide sidewalks that are out of character with the rest of the neighborhood. And Richard Adams. Yes. Michael. Yes. Randy. Yes. Alex. Yes. JJ. Yes. Raduka. Yes. Lisa. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Richard. Yes, but I have a reservation oh. in that uh, a residential development in a commercial zone, the adjacent places might be 15 foot sidewalk. <laughs> I don't know, but it's possible. For people Jesse. To have... Yes. Rick. Yes. Lana. Yes. Alexa, yes, and Adam. Yes. Motion passes. Great, moving on to agenda item number eight, government affairs, Barry Johnson, go ahead. Okay, and this um, motion came to us late after our meeting. So um, Randy, I think, were you bringing this for us? Yes, uh, I am. So the motion- I second. Reads the I second. Too late, Richard. Okay. The other Richard seconded. So the motion reads the Board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, opposes Council File 09 0969 S3 unless non applicant appeal fees are increased no more than 10% from the present fee schedule. The proposed $16,000 fee would essentially prevent every stakeholder and community organization the right to appeal a decision in favor of a development because they would be financially prevented from doing so. And this is gonna be going before Plum and eventually city council again. And um, for instance, on Fruitland and Riverton, we have a 70 foot uh, tall apartment building that's been approved where there's like a single story um, apartment now. And the reason they got the additional uh, 25 feet, normally they could build 45, is because it's within a half mile of our metro station. But the homeowners surrounding both the multifamily, like one and two story multifamilies on the north side of Fruitland, as, as well as the south side um, single family 
homeowners got together and and filed an appeal to try and prevent 70 feet in this neighborhood that's relatively um, short. And they were denied their appeal because it's within near the metro station. But that aside, their filing fee was like $89. This is trying to increase fees that could be as much as $16,000 for surrounding neighbors to file. Yet, if the applicant wanted to file something that they disagreed with, they'd still keep that $89 fee. So, I mean, this is really a no-brainer for me. And, and it's like neighborhood councils all over the city I, I got an email on this issue, and it was like one page of just of all the organizations and neighborhood councils it went to before it got to the body of the email. So this is a really hot issue that we needed to get the CIF going now and not wait another month. We'll do public comment at this point in time. Public comment is now open on agenda item eight. A, we have public comment from Puppet for two minutes. Go ahead. Yeah, so again, um, this was the good work of um, Mitchell Englander. Yes, see, he was the first one. And Bill Puppet was in the room when it happened, he said. There's too many frivolous appeals of projects. We need to deter that. And deter it with higher fees. Little did we know the reason why him and Mr. Weezer proposed this idea was one thing. Uh, really? Yes. Beautiful women for free. Gaming chips. Gaming chips. And cash. And cash. Yes, that's right. So, of course, we oppose it. It must die. Any council member that votes in favor of this needs to be immediately turned in to the FBI probe. Who would want to charge $16,000 for an appeal? What kind of appeal do you get? Yes, and by the way, Jesse, uh, you're playing the drinking game. Chicom virus. Have a sip. So every time you hear Chicom virus, everybody take one sip of your beverage. And again, it's like the Chicom virus. Yes, it comes ahead of us. Yes. And we must fight this. And I can't believe that the great Paul Martin Krikorian, your hero, is not stopping this. But again, we know who supports it in the CD2 office. It's all Jessica Fulgate's problem. It's all her fault. Jessica wants it. We don't want it. You don't want it. And I think we're going to get the first ever unanimous council vote with an, a friendly amendment that you will thank Goat Puppet for all the hard work he's had on the Jose Weizar and Mitchell Englander investigation. Your time has expired. A public comment from call in user number one. Go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Johnson, for proposing this. I'm gonna, I uh, decided pro bono, even though one of your uh, uh, fellow board members, uh, Michael Dillazar or whatever, uh, says I'm going to be charging. I'll, I do stuff for free, as a lot of other people do. I'm going to uh, suggest that you rewrite it accordingly, because it's a little wordy, the uh, readiness and smoothness, and also there's a grammar problem. So I'm just going to suggest... The proposed $16,000 fee would essentially and financially prevent any person or organization to file an appeal of a of a decision. That's it. See? Real simple. See, Fried would know that because I think you have a JD. Oh, I don't think you do. But he knows government. Shorter, it should be yes, no, shall, shall not, do, do not, will, will not. So it's up to you. Uh, but if you want to leave it as such, I, I, I understand. Thank you. Who's the guy that keeps talking? 
Madam Summer, he is a member of the public and is just utilizing his time to speak. Okay, moving right along. Um, uh, board comments. Go ahead, Richard Niederberg. Yeah, my question is, so the way you read it sounded a little different from the way I originally read it. I'm wondering, is it neutral so that we are, if, if the charge is not for being in front, in favor of the project or not in favor of the project. It sounded like it was mostly for us to oppose the project. Whereas for some reason, we, after the future, we want, we may want to support one that they don't like. Is it neutral in the end? Can you I, I have one? no problem with this motion and it was written basically taking from what about 20 other neighborhood councils submitted. So uh, I'm not really, I haven't heard any uh, friendly amendment that I accept. I'm right just now. trying to say, is it neutral? That's all. Thank you. Any other board comment? Richard Adams. Yes, sir. Um, I would point out that it reads non-applicant appeal fees. So it is not necessarily neutral, but if it what Mr. I understood Mr. Barry correctly, the only people getting increased were people challenging. So obviously the original motion is not neutral either. So I firmly believe that the 10% limit you know, keeps things. The city can't argue. Oh my God, we're not going to. You know, it's going to cost us money when they're not charging the applicant the additional sixteen thousand dollar fee. But the people who don't want their neighborhood land raped do have to come up with that kind of cash. Uh, this is a no brainer. It's you know, pay to play. Welcome to Los Angeles. It's Chinatown, Jake, and I've lived here longer than most of you people, and it's only gotten worse. So yeah, I support this motion totally. And Barry, I agree. I haven't heard any friendly amendments. Thanks. And when this goes in as a CIS, it's going to register as opposed to the motion. Nobody's going to read this anyway unless they click on something else. But we become part of the group that's in opposition. Any other board comments? Seeing none, let's move it to vote. Richard? Yes. Michael? Yes. Randy? Yes. Alex? Yes. JJ? Absent. Raduka? She may have dropped off. She sent an email saying that she had to leave. Okay. <coughs> Lisa? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Richard Niederberg? Yes. Jesse? Yes. Rick? Yes. Lana? Yes. Alexa? Yes. And Adam? Yes. Motion passes. Great. Barry, motion 8B. Okay. Last motion from GAC um, has to do with signs that you see around Studio City that are, for instance, one of the most prevalent is we buy houses. Um, Ten years ago or so, we had a member of our land use committee. Her name was Mar Marilyn White Sedell. I know Lisa will remember her. She used to go around taking down these signs off our telephone poles and lamp posts. She, she and one of her friends would several days a month drive around pulling these signs down and if they found anyone putting it up they always had the bureau of street services brochure which even says what your fines are for doing this unfortunately now 10 years later the fines are not enough and they're outdated and they, they need to look at increasing the violation fines. You know, these are a visual blight throughout our city. And um, I know Marilyn 
um, would be pleased that we're asking them to raise the fines so to, in, in order to try and keep people from doing this. And, and the fact is now the fines are so low that the people that put these signs up just look at it as a cost of doing business. So it, obviously the fines are not high enough. Um, it's similar to the motion we did a couple months ago about fines on developers who just take trees out and then they know they're going to get fined three thousand dollars for a native tree being rem removed without a permit, but they just look at it as the cost of doing business to build what they want to build where they want to build it where that tree was. So it's kind of the same thing. We have a public comment. Oh, do you want to read the motion? Yeah. Um, the board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council requests Council Member Paul Krikorian to make a motion to significantly increase the violation fines for Los Angeles Municipal Code Section 28.04 dash handbills, signs, public places, and objects as posted in the Bureau of Street Services investigation and enforcement divisions, quote, illegal sign posting removal program, unquote, brochure, in an effort to re reduce illegal visual blight throughout the city of Los Angeles. Great, we have public comment. So opening public comment on agenda item 8B, calling user one, go ahead. Oh, long motion. Let's let's start with uh, sentence three. Significant increases. That sounds a little vague, overbroad, and ambiguous. Uh, you never uh, provided a supporting document what the current fines are. Also, there's a little court appeal decision called City Council versus Taxpayers for Vincent. It's a real deal. Uh, all it went up all the way to the United States Supreme Court about this. You should probably find out how much enforcement's been doing right now and based on the data that i see they don't do too much enforcement and normally this goes to administrative hearing so administrative hearing and then you for 25 dollars you could take an appeal to superior uh, supreme court what's the cost and who's going to enforce it also if someone puts a sign with my name and my phone number on it i'm going to get fined that's why it has to be done in the presence of so need to better think this out. And you should probably draft something for Krikorian, not to create more work for him. Uh, Freed knows all about that, that fraud. He, uh, he could just do whatever he uh, thinks he can, and he doesn't assist anybody to make it more fruitful. Uh, nothing to blame you on, but uh, he claims that uh, he knows everything about government. Obviously, uh, he has a grammar problem, Freed, and a hyperlink problem. So do as you so choose, city council versus taxpayer for Vincent. That's the citation. Thank you. We have public comment from Puppet. Yeah, so as we continue in these meetings for the Chicon virus strike. Yeah, so now we have the um oh very good, Carol. Very good. Yeah, so now um handbills. That's a that's a sticky topic. That's uh you know, that was handed down by the Supreme Court that you can't fuck with the First Amendment and an overbroad description of handbills. <laughs> handbills mean a lot of things. Handbills, what are you talking about? No, no, hand bills, not 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 hand jobs. I'm sorry, go ahead. Please forgive me. Yes, thank you, asshole. <laughs> so now um you know, what is significantly more? Let's have the fucking numbers. Twenty percent, thirty percent. What is the bearded one thinking here? Yes, I, I thought I thought Goat Puppet was marshalling a new era for Randy Fraud, uh, doing business as Randy Fry Chicken. <laughs> I thought you were getting on board on simplification, but apparently you're magnifying the issue. And again, it's not really Randy Fraud's fault. It's all Jessica Fulgate's fault. 
She continues to compound the work of Paul Martin Krikorian. He's even trying to grow a mustache. That's how bad things are getting for him, yes. So we have to make things easier on our council members. <laughs> so I would say no to this. I would require an economic analysis, a study, and as well as a, as a letter sent to have um, no, Mr. Weezer comment on this item because uh, I'm blaming him. But again, it's all Jessica Fulgate's fault. And thank you to Lois Weinshaft for all your hard work. It's not Randy Johnson or Randy Freed or any of you. Lois Weinshaft is doing most of the paperwork for this council, says Alexa Steinberg. Your time has expired. Board coming. Richard Adams. Uh, yeah, Mr. President. Yeah, I just raised my hand. Um, I missed the court citation for this item. Uh, it's brought up by what, public user number one and goat puppet. Uh, pending a read of what this decision is and whether or not it is applicable to this, as a member of the Government Affairs Committee, I would ask the chair that he seriously consider tabling this for a cycle so we can see what the uh, legal ramifications are and if the uh, case is cited by the public who, you know, while uh, interesting, do seem to be well-versed in the verbiage involved, might behoove us all before we do something that, you know, might be actually counterproductive. It, the, it's whole a brochure, the whole brochure is just about posting things on property that doesn't belong to the post person posting. Barry, so, I get that. But if there is a actual U.S. Supreme Court holding us or even a California Supreme Kate case holding on this, we might want to fall back and regroup for 30 days and go over it again. I don't think it'll hurt anything. For the revisions I'm asking from the council member do not have to do with this. Okay. I just, I was bringing it up and I thought people made various points that I currently do not have time to research, you know, in real time, considering with this meeting. And since it's not a burning down the house issue, I thought a, a 30, uh, one cycle delay might be appropriate, but it's your motion. So I defer. And, and the title of LAMC 28.04, its title is Handbill Signs, Public Places, and Objects. I get that, Barry. That's the, or, the yeah. title of the ordinance, but th that's I understand. what we're asking. Yeah. I understand. I just thought I'd raise the point. That's all. I'm done. Any other board? Great. Any other board comment? Nancy. I had my hands up, Randy. Yep, sorry, go ahead. Um, I'm not voting for this. I think it's absolutely a huge government overreach. In my neighborhood, people lose animals, pets, and uh, those little signs up on those phone poles, they're important. And uh, we've used them. I've answered a call actually from a sign that was up on a, one of those telephone poles. Um, we've had somebody who found something that was lost out of a stroller. I don't know if they got it back, but they put up a sign. I actually really like those. It makes me feel like I'm part of a community. So um, I won't be voting for it. Uh, Richard Adams, the uh, handbill case that's referenced uh, city council versus the taxpayers for Vincent. Um, and the short of it is it's the court held that a city may prohibit altogether the use of utility poles for posting of signs, but it goes on. Um, but anyway, look up the case. Uh, it's a rather thick case anyway. Uh, any other board comment? Mr. Oh, President, yes. just uh, uh, hold on. Uh, one sec. Uh, Rick Rosner. Quick question for Barry. Um, based on Nancy's comment, would in practical terms, would this leave people who aren't habitual offenders alone? You know, you lose your cat, you put up some signs. Uh, you're not going to get dinged for that. In practical terms, these all take somebody reporting, and I really doubt somebody's going to report a missing cat sign that's not up for long in most cases, but I sure as hell would report these 
we buy houses signs that I see everywhere and I keep on reporting them. Those are the things that are visual blights and, and they're everywhere. The missing cat signs are not everywhere and they're not up in, per, you know, forever either. Richard Niederberg. Yeah. Collateral issue, but may affect this issue. Um, I've been a precinct thing for a long, number of years, and right next door to the to, to the uh, voting house was a, a candidate who had her signs all over the place. And of course, you're not supposed to have within 100 feet uh, election material of that nature, advocacy. So I, of course, called to the attorney, my friends there, and uh, uh, they said, don't touch them at all. It's totally preempted by the uh, um, federal government. And they said, don't take down anything that looks like political on private property. I know this is about not your property. What I'm saying is it's getting into uh, an area which may be a little restrictive. Just wanted to say that basically because, because the feds have said you can't take down uh, even if even if the state says nothing with a hundred feet, okay, you can't do it. Thank you. Political signs are not governed by Code twenty eight zero four. So the Supreme Court just to uh, uh, add a little more meat to the bones. Supreme Court, uh, the case that was cited, specifically says prohibiting homeowners from displaying political, religious, or personal messages on on their own property entirely foreclosed a venerable means of communication that is unique and important and that is an unusually cheap form of communication without viable alternatives for any residents it goes on uh, and basically says the prohibition in vincent was distinguished as not removing a uniquely valuable or important mode of communication uh, and so it's pretty clear that uh, from the supreme court's point of view that you can't ban this because um it's a form of, of free speech that's available to everyone because it's so accessible. Um, so I, I will be as well it's, voting against this. It's not um, the fact that you can write the sign and post it, but it's about where you can legally post it. Right, but the, the court, the case made, the federal case makes a note specifically of like light poles. So it's, it's, it's referencing where. Uh, and anyway, everyone vote how they like, look up the bill, up to everyone, uh, seeing no other hands for board comment. Uh, let's uh, take this to a vote. Can I just make a quick suggestion, Randy? I'm sorry. Just uh, Please, no, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, please. Go ahead, Lisa. Um, so one of the reasons that you see those signs everywhere is because of the fact that they work. Being in land use for as many years as I have been, I have heard many stories where people have actually sold their homes to people who put up those signs and say, we buy homes. And these people who sell their homes to these people um, are in financial need. And the signs work. Having said that, yes, cats, dogs, absolutely, garage sales. What I think uh, the motion should uh, elude to in a positive way is to just put a timeline. Up. If you're going to put a sign up, maybe three day time limit, five day time limit. I don't know what that looks like, but it's just the suggestion moving forward. If you want to bring it forward back up again with maybe keeping that in mind, that's that. Thank you. Okay, let's move this to a vote, please. Alexa, go ahead. Uh, if Lisa Kay offered a motion to table, I second. Lisa, was that a motion to table? Sure. I okay. move to uh, table this motion. Parliamentary order, postpone. Question? Okay, I'll, I'll accept tabling it, but keep in mind the fines are already in place. This is just increasing them. So for all of you saying that you can't do it, it's already being done. This is just to increase 
the fines. But I'll table it to the next meeting. Thank you. Good night. Point of order, that's a postponement. Why don't we just... Yes, I'm a... So a motion to postpone, second? I'll second it. Okay. Uh, I, I seconded it, Melissa made it, I seconded it. Great, uh, all those opposed, all those in favor? Aye. The slippery Aye. slope. Yes. Aye. Aye. Sounds, sounds like the ayes have it in hands, it went up. Aye. Uh, all those against? Against. One, two, I'm hearing two no's. Sounds like the yeses have it. Uh, motion is postponed. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we're at the end of our meeting. For those stakeholders that joined us, thank you so much. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night.